Good morning. The gospel this morning comes from Mark's gospel. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side of the lake, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the Sea of Galilee. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, fell at Jesus' feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been sick for 12 years. She had endured many doctors and had spent all she had, and she was no better. But instead, she grew worse. And she said to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Immediately, her sickness went away, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Jesus said, who touched me? And his disciples said to him, Lord, you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked her all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before Jesus, and told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and healed of your disease. While he was speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But hearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and crying loudly. When he had entered the house, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and cry? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at Jesus. Then Jesus put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome with amazement. And Jesus told them that no one should know this and told, her, told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. One of the gifts of being a follower of Jesus is that he brings healing to people's lives. There's many, many stories in the Bible about how Jesus healed people, and we hear two of them today. One is the woman who just touched his clothes, barely touched him, and the power of God meant to heal her came out of Jesus, and she was made well. And the other is Jairus' daughter, the leader of the synagogue, a little girl, 12, who was very sick and was dying. And Jesus came to her, and he laid his hands on her and said, Talitha kum, which is, in their language, get up, little girl. And she was healed and took, took about, went about living her life in all its fullness. And Jesus brings healing today. Jesus heals us of our fears, of our concerns. Sometimes we're healed of our sickness. Sometimes people who are very near death recover and take up a new life. But even beyond that, Jesus heals us beyond the door of death in a life that has no ending. It's one of the great gifts of being a follower of Jesus, that we follow someone who is interested enough in our lives that he brings healing, that he brings peace, that he brings hope, that he brings new life to everyone. And he calls us to be healers too. We may not have his power to heal sickness, but we do have his power to bring love to other people, to heal relationships that are broken, to help people who are hurt, and to be healers in our families and among our friends and in the world around us. So I want you to remember that Jesus heals. It's something that is so important to him that we are well, that we are made whole. And he also calls us in our own way, in our own time, to be healers to others. Amen. Stand up now. It's time to say together the Nicene Creed, which will come up on your screen uh, with me. So are you ready? Here we go. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, <clears throat> begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time and the chance to worship together. We look forward to the time when we can all be together in the choir room once again. Now be with us as we join our parents once again for the prayers of the people for today. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> 